We're staying with one of our lead stories tonight. And for more insights into the performance of the National Assembly in the year 2020, we're now being joined on the News at 10 by the Executive Director of Yaga Africa, Mr. Samson Itodo. He joins us via Skype from the United Kingdom. Mr. Itodo, thanks for joining us on the News at 10. A happy new year to you. Thanks for having me and happy new year to you too. What's your general assessment of the National Assembly in the year gone by? Well, I listened to the previous report, um, and it's a clear reflection of what happened in the National Assembly in 2020. Um, you can't assess the National Assembly without um, its, its core functions of, of lawmaking, of oversight, and representation. If you look at the responsiveness of the National Assembly, I'll say to a large extent, the National Assembly did take actions, legislative actions that respond to the yearnings of Nigerians. Um, first, the response to COVID-19. I think the National Assembly should be credited um, for the pressure that you put on the executive, ostensibly, you know, disturbed by the lack of in the inaction on the part of the executive, the National Assembly took actions in January and in March, and most of the actions taken by the executive in response to the COVID-19 is in direct response to what the National Assembly um, did. Um, you've also seen the National Assembly engage in populist actions um, as it relates to defending the rights of citizens. Um, and so to a large extent, you say the National Assembly did respond to the yearnings of Nigerians. However, there are some gaps with respect to the response of the National Assembly. Now we can talk about that. Um, the second is you've also seen you know, the National Assembly take progressive steps um, towards amending some, some laws in the country. Although um, what is disturbing is some of these laws um, are yet to be um, concluded. Um, for instance, the Infectious Diseases Bill, that's one piece of legislation, the electoral reforms, even though the National Assembly is acting on it and has um, you know, in indicated to conclude this process by March of 2021. What is however disturbing um, with the National Assembly over the, the last 12 months, you know, we also saw an attempt to use legislative instruments to shrink the civic space. So you saw bills like the social media bill, hate speech bill. Um, these are draconian legislations, you know, that limit the civic space. And citizens did push back on these legislations. And we're still expecting the National Assembly, you know, to communicate to Nigerians what's the report of the committee and what's his position on this bill. I think the last point is, if you look at both chambers of the National Assembly, I think the House of Reps um, seems to be more progressive compared to the Senate um, because of some actions it's taken. So if you look at um, the, the House of Reps, you know, has deployed technology um, to ensure electronic um, voting on, on bills. This is, a, this is unprecedented. But you know, when it comes to transparency, we, we're still, um, constituents cannot um, say um, or determine the position that their lawmakers take on several policy matters. And then if the National Assembly is keenly interested in transparency, then people ought to know how their legislators are voting on policy issues. Uh, and so the National Assembly should be open um, with um, voting records on bills. And with also attendance of, of lawmakers, because constituents um, need to know. And I cannot conclude by saying that um, this National Assembly has a responsibility to defend the interests of the people, because some actions that the National Assembly has taken seem to be pandering to um, the whims and caprices of the executive as opposed to working for the Nigerian people. And if the Ninth National Assembly is going to make significant impact, then it must repose confidence in Nigerians that it is working for Nigerians and not working for the executive. Well, I like that you have itemized like and picked up on some of the really important the issues, you know, uh, that the National Assembly had to face during 2020. But one issue, of course, is security. And with that came calls for the sack of service chiefs in the country, which has still not happened. The National Assembly also summoned the president to address uh, the assembly over the insecurity in the country. That also did not happen. So would you say the National Assembly reached its wit's end in 2020? Well, I think um, the National Assembly um, needs to 
um, take serious its constitutional responsibility of holding the executive to account. And that function of legislative oversight is paramount um, to, to good governance. You have an executive that over the last couple of months, and I'll say years, appears to have disregard for democratic institutions like the National Assembly. So motions and, and um, resolutions of the National Assembly are not respected um, by the executive. And that raises fundamental questions on our democracy and that whole principle of separation of powers and checks and balances. The National Assembly has a constitutional responsibility. It is disappointing that in March, when the National Assembly, particularly the Senate, resolved that the president should address the nation, the presidency responded by calling the National Assembly as an institution that was engaging in populist advocacies and cheap and sensational. And this was credited to the spokesperson of the, pres of, of the president. And that's really disappointing. If we want to make progress, then the executive and other arms of government must respect you know, resolutions and legislations passed by the National Assembly. And how many times have the National Assembly called for the sack and the rejigging of our security architecture? But it appears it's falling on deaf ears because it, it, it does appear, in my estimation, that the president um, does not regard some resolutions taken by the National Assembly. And so the National Assembly has, within its own constitutional powers, mechanisms to put the executive in check. And so they should activate you know, those provisions in the Constitution that vest powers on them to hold the executive to account. They can't continue to play politics with the lives of Nigerians because we're losing lives on a daily basis. They have been voted into power to check the executive and not to pander to the executive. And so it is important that as we move into 2021, um, down to 2022, this ninth national assembly must ensure that they hold the executive to account yes separation of powers is not separation of government but they have sworn to protect and, and make laws for the good governance of our country and so they should live up to that responsibility yeah, and that responsibility also has been placed on them by Nigerians who are also holding them accountable in 2021. We'd love to see a better assembly. Samson Itodio, thank you again for joining us on the News at 10. Thank you. Always a delight.